Hello and welcome to Amiya Meet. Uh, today we have with us a young man who has decided to walk from Accra to Kumase all in the bid of uh, promoting peace uh, in the upcoming elections as well as highlighting some important uh, travel destinations and uh, tourism spots along the way. I have with me King K hey. Africa. Yeah. Nice. Welcome to Amiya TV. Thank you very much. It's a privilege. Great. Uh, so what made you decide to uh, embark on this project? I think um, the ambience that circulated around me while growing up. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up in La, so you would understand. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about La. The aggression, mm -hmm. uh, whenever the elections are cropping up, mm -hmm. you know, people in NDC, people in MPP, same friends who meet under a shared play cards and all sort of games but then when the elections are coming up then you see the clash the tension between the two mm -hmm. so i i decided that as a filmmaker instead of um, doing commercials on tv or radio putting it out there it gets to the people but then uh, you realize that calling somebody to talk to the person would understand but going to the person to knock on their door and say i have something which will benefit you and myself sinks in more mm -hmm. so then i decided to do this road trip so i could interact with these people personally and i know it was sinking for them so that's one of the major reasons yeah great so uh when did it start and at what point did you start from it started on the 31st of october and not, not only the walking, but then the significance, the impact I wanted it to create. So I started from Independence Square, precisely in front of the Black Star Arc. And from there, all the way to Menshia Palace. And the Black Star Arc, because that's where independence, we celebrate our independence, and the whole black thing comes to play. And then Menshia Palace, because Utun Four drums home peace the president's visiting and then he also talks about it. So ending it in his land with him was sinking for everybody in the country. Yeah. Great. So we've seen your starting and your finish point, but in between which are the other places uh, you made stops at? Because so, I'm guessing from Accra to Kumase is quite a long walk. I know, right? 248 kilometers, 51 hours. And I think I was averaging 30 kilometers per day. Okay. And I was doing not less than six to seven hours of walking time non-stop. So on the first day, you know, with the tension and everything. So I made a stop in the night around four at Amasamai. And mostly when I stop at a particular town, because of the interaction with people, I allocated four hours of walking time and then four hours, 30 minutes of interaction. Okay. But then everything changed on the way you end up talking to people and then they begin to tell you their problems in the constituency. Mm -hmm. So you have to spend more time with them. And also, once I get to every major town, I have to report myself to the nearest police station for them to aware because we sent a letter to mm -hmm. headquarters. So if there is any assistance in terms of armed robbery, attacks, then they can come to our aid. So I stopped at Amasamai the first day. Uh, I think I averaged 22.3 kilometers the first day. But the second day, I made it to Insawam, and then I continued from Insawam to Suhum, which I did uh, 35.6 kilometers. And then from there, from Suhum, I did to Apeja, from Apeja to Bonsu, Lindador. I made a stop there. Now, people were thinking that the pace at which I was moving was so fast. Mm -hmm. So they were doubting even if I was walking or I was jumping into a car mm -hmm. or a Pragya or anything that was cutting the journey short. So I, I then decided to slow the pace. You know the Ghanaian mentality in mm -hmm. quotes. You buy something cheap, it's not, it's mm -hmm. not original. You buy it expensive, it's original. So mm -hmm. let me slow down the pace for people to understand. And at every point in time, I was doing a live video on my mm -hmm. Facebook page for people to be a part of the whole mm -hmm. journey. So when I got to Linda Door, I made a stop. And then from Linda Door, I made it all the way to Nkoko. Mm -hmm. And then from Nkoko to Konongo, from Konongo to Ejiso, from Ejiso finally to Kumase. That's interesting. I like the fact that at some point you mentioned that you, you were speaking with the police and so you report. But in terms of security, how was it all together? I mean, were you traveling alone? Were you with a team? 
and what else uh, went in for security? So we were with uh, one medical personnel, mm -hmm. um, one driver, one security, private security personnel, and then one tourist lady who mapped out all the tourist sites we'll be visiting. But then boils down to the challenge. The first day when we moved from Independence Square, before we got to Pokwasi, our car got damaged. So the medical personnel and the tourist lady had to return, oh. including the driver, with the car. So mm -hmm. I was left with myself and then the camera guy, mm -hmm. uh, who, who served as the DP directing mm -hmm. all the shots. So then again, we were, I was calling for reinforcement. But then on the second thought, I'm like, OK, you're, you're drumming home peace. And you're working with a bodyguard, I should say. So mm -hmm. what's the peace in this whole thing? Mm -hmm. Now, if I, I am able to make it all the way from Amasama to Kumase without any security guard, without any police patrol, then it means people should begin to understand the kind of peace we are enjoying and not to think or do contrary to that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I decided not to go to with any security personnel from that point. So all the way, no security. I just mm -hmm. report at the police station, Amasama police station, Saman police station, take pictures with the police officers, the commander. Mm -hmm. And I tell them, they're like, okay, we got your letter from headquarters, but what do you need? I say, I don't need anything. Mm -hmm. In case anything happens to me, that's when I will phone in, mm -hmm. but I hope nothing happens. And nothing really happened. So you had uh, places you would stop and stay and then yeah. continue. Cool, and then you would charge your equipment. I was going to ask you how exactly. you... Exactly. But equipment. physically, what did you have to do to sort of prepare you for this journey? So when I had the idea two months earlier, uh, I'm not an athlete. Maybe in JHS or primary school. <laughs> that was when I was doing football or long jump or something. Mm -hmm. But since then, never. So when I had the idea, I'm like, okay, I need to train myself. But, you know, filmmaker doing editing, graphics, animation, and all that, you wouldn't even have much time to go on the road. Mm -hmm. So I think I did training sessions like twice, mm -hmm. morning and evening, uh, in a week, just to check the calculation that, ha that I had made. Okay, if 248 kilometers, and I'm averaging 20 kilometers a day, mm -hmm. it means I'll be able to do 10 days, 10 days. which will be let's say 200 kilometers, mm -hmm. then extra two days, Jara, I mean, the mm -hmm. people who understand, I'm mm -hmm. not an athlete, so mm -hmm. I do an extra two days, make it a 12. That's a lot of stress on the body, yeah. but it's so good <laughs> mentally and all of that. Yeah. And you did mention that you would interact with the people. What were some of the conversations you prepared to have and what were some of the new ones that you saw? You emerged discussing with these people. Um, so the whole message was to drum home peace for them to observe peace during and after the elections. Mm -hmm. But then when you get to the place and you meet the people, then, I mean, doing analysis, when they speak, you begin to understand their orientation and mm -hmm. the direction they are coming from. So everything changes. For instance, I, I got to somewhere in Suhum. So I saw there was a church service. Mm -hmm. I just barged into the church service with everybody there. And then I spoke to the prophetess in charge and she said okay i mean it's a good agenda so take the microphone and say something to the people now obviously it's a church room so i need to start with something godly <laughs> reach on <laughs> exactly so hallelujah and you'll get a response for them. <laughs> so like that then i improvise before mm -hmm. i make them understand that Without peace, they wouldn't even have access to sit in the church room mm -hmm. to enjoy the word of God. So I channel the message to suit who I'm speaking to at, at that particular time. Great. And you obviously also mapped up some tourist destinations to highlight. What, what were some of these ones? Um, the Kwewu Mountains. Yeah. <laughs> I'm also from there though. Oh, so cool. I went to the mountains and most of them were in Kumasi. Mm -hmm. And then when we got to Suhum and in Sawan, then Sawan prison, we went there. But then they were from small hitches. So, mm -hmm. so all these places, yeah. And okay. it was Linda who, that, who did all that. I mean, okay. I didn't know all these, all these places. <laughs> Good. And I mean, uh, being a filmmaker yourself and you documenting this process, is it going to come out at some point and what should we expect? Oh yes, um, 
initially um, we wanted to put it out there by the close of every day mm -hmm. so on day one when we got to our master line, i took the shots from the dp and i like to edit my stuff so i know how i want it so i was working on it and i realized it was around 2 to 3 a.m before i could even finish doing a teaser mm -hmm. so i slept and the next morning by 5 5 30 up again on the road so mm -hmm. i stressed out so the thought came in, okay, why put yourself, if you don't finish this journey, Ghanaians will throw you big time. <laughs> <laughs> so then let me finish the entire journey and then keep it per day. Mm -hmm. Now after that, then we release it in episodes. Mm -hmm. Say day one, episode one, day two, episode two, like that. So as I speak to you, it's in editing. So once yeah. it's done, start putting it down. So, uh, at the end of it all, do you feel achieved? Uh, was it, did it go the way you wanted it to go? And... Yeah. Um, okay, so one not sports the entire soup, so I use one guy. So he came up to me at the taxi station, mm -hmm. and then he's like, "Hey, do you do well, you crack?" Because at the back of my T-shirt, it was written, "Working to save lives." Not mm -hmm. the business, maybe he'll be in quiet and all. Now maybe they might imagine say, if I wouldn't, I mean, go with any piece, what I want to do is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. right? So the only thing I told him was the fact that he should begin to understand that uh, if he is a Christian, the life you're living is not your life. Your life is the life of Christ. And that you buy your own food, you take care of your own self because you're an adult. But your life is not your life. That is the reason why anything happens to you, the government and the police goes after that person who mm -hmm. caused you damage because it is not your life. Mm -hmm. So he should begin to think about the people that relent on him, the people that wake up every morning hoping and being happy that he is alive mm -hmm. and that he's going to do something in order to help them, mm -hmm. not about himself, but the people that look mm -hmm. up to him. Mm -hmm. And I think I think I struck a chord in him, so we touched his soft spot. And it's like, hey, Abrante, what do you <laughs> feel? <say?" laughs> uh, yeah, I'm a young man, no big deal. It's the work of God. Yeah. Good. Uh, and it's a wrap, but I want to find out how did he get back to Accra? <laughs> <laughs> hey, what was that? So, um, so I I got friends who supported the whole agenda. Funny enough, it wasn't supported by any corporate stakeholder company. But then friends who supported, so some booked me a flight with uh, my DP to come back. But I'm like, no, I'm not, I'm not sitting in that place. I just want to go back that road again and take a look at it and see the distance I walked. So I used a bus returning back. And looking at the distance, and funny enough, God is so amazing. From day one that I started the journey, I never felt any pain. It never rained. The day I touched down in Kumasi, my feet began to swell. I began to feel pain in my shoulders and my ribs, like pain all over. And on, in the bus and watching the road, and I couldn't believe myself walking this distance because from Suhum to Lindado, it's an entire bush. Mm -hmm. And looking at the bush alone with just cars passing, I'm like, whoa, I did this. Okay. Now I could do anything. In fact, I could even walk from Ghana to America. Yeah. <laughs> I was about to ask you what next. Anyway, it's been amazing uh, sharing this exciting journey you went on with uh, the viewers. And we wish you all the very best. We were keeping an eye out. Uh, so let them know where they can find the weekly, daily episodes. Okay. So they can find it on Facebook um, at Kinke Africa. And then also YouTube, my YouTube channel at King K Africa. Also, I post on Instagram and Twitter, all at King K Africa. Thank you very much. It's the wrap. <laughs>